I'm going to hand over to uh, Ali Crooks. Now, Ali is the founder of Trader Support Club. He's been trading since, you've told me, 2002. Is that right? 2002. There we go. Just over two decades. So plenty of experience. And what Ali's going to do is spend the next 15, 20 minutes running through some of the biggest and most important lessons that he's learned during his trading career. And perhaps most importantly, the key insights that you guys in the room can draw from these lessons that, uh, that Ali is going to share with us. So without further ado, Ali, I'll hand over to you. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Nice to see you. Uh, nice to see some familiar faces here as well, and some new faces. Uh, as, you, as you said, my name's Ali Crooks, which is a great name to have if you work in the finance industry. So yeah, I've been trading about 20 years. I've been running my own managed fund for the last four. I'm not going to waste time going on about how great I am, all right, because there's lots of other things that I want to talk to you about. Because tonight, what I really want to do is try and pass over some of the mistakes, the insights, the cock-ups, the realizations that I've had over the years. And I think the important thing to say is... How many of you as traders here, when you think you've just got it, something else happens and you're like, no, something else I've got to learn, something else I've got to learn. Yeah, so these insights aren't the holy grail of insights. They're just a few things that have hit me. And it's not just me, but also the, the students and the clients that I work with. So the first one is, and I'll, I'll move away a lot. I usually jump around a little bit. So if you, if you, if you don't hear me, I'll make sure I move back. So the first one is focusing too much on skills rather than attributes. Now, you could add in another couple of words there. You could put indicators, tools, charts. And it's important to understand that those factors are hugely important. Yeah, you have to have knowledge. You have to have a set of skills. You have to have strategies. And you have to work on getting better at those. But the problem is, a lot of the time, when a trader goes through a three or a four or a five, or a six or a seven trade losing run, suddenly what they do is they go back to the drawing board or they think they need a new strategy or they think they need to optimize what they're doing or add in another indicator. And in some cases that may be true, but the challenge is a lot of the time that trader is focusing on a new tool rather than thinking about attributes. Now, some of you might be thinking, what's the difference between a skill and an attribute? Think of it like this. A skill is something that you learn and practice in a what I call a closed loop environment. So without any external factors coming in, so you can get better and better at your chart analysis. But you can get better and better at your chart analysis, but then suddenly talk yourself out of a trade when you've had that five or six trade losing run. So part of what I think is important is to work on those attributes. And what are some of the causes of things? Well, the first one is pressure. Who here as a trader has ever felt pressure? Yeah. How many of you felt pressure, not necessarily when you're on a losing run, but actually when you're on a winning run, as you actually start tightening up a little bit because you don't want to give the profits back? So pressure comes in different ways. How many of you here have had a period where you're getting itchy feet because you haven't had any trades? Yeah, and then the strategy starts to, yeah, you see, oh, you're doing this. And the problem is a lot of those times you go searching for something new when actually you need to look and see where your resilience is. So the wrong mental framework, this often, I see this a lot with traders where they'll be in a position where they're thinking too short term, worrying about their profit this week, worrying about their profit this month. And rather than focusing on what I call a bigger time and space horizon. So that's what I say to a lot of traders is whatever time frame that you're focused on, by default, widen that time frame. So if you're thinking about how much profit you're going to make this month, by default, extrapolate your mental framework out to a quarter. If you're thinking in quarters, extrapolate your mental framework out to a year. And that doesn't mean the result of that month and that quarter doesn't matter. But often, if you're focused on that time period, that's where your emotion is sitting and that's when the wrong decisions can be made. Your personality style. Not all traders are meant to trade the same markets in the same way, the same strategy. And over time, it's important to understand that you have to know thyself. Charlie and I were talking about this a little bit earlier. It's an important framework to have. It's easy to see a trader that's trading a certain way, especially if they're making money, and think that that's the way that you need to trade. But part of becoming a successful trader is taking ownership and understanding yourself and how you operate best in the markets. Varying trading landscape. That's what a lot of tonight is going to be about, about the fact that the mark, what the conditions we're seeing right now are very different to the conditions we were seeing five years ago. 
And I think one of the challenges traders have is once they find a strategy and they get on a roll with it, the market conditions change and they want things to go back to how they were. Or they are immersed in the fact that we're going through a certain period and that seems like a long period of time. But what we're going through right now, the theme at the moment obviously being interest rates and inflation, that won't be the theme in three, four or five years time. There'll be something else and the market conditions will have shifted. But when you're in it, it's very easy to think that what you're feeling in that moment is going to be like that forever. So be aware that things are changing and are going to change again. And in five years' time, we're going to change again. And if you're sitting there hoping for the status quo to be the same, then you're in for a shock. So solutions. What solutions can you have? What things can you do? And again, if, this was, if, I, was, if I had an hour, we'd spend a lot more time on this. But so I'm going to give you a few things that you can do when I delve into more detail. But one of them is better self-talk. Those of you that have seen Charlie and I when we do our podcast, we talk about self-talk a lot because it's extremely important. And what I mean here is not just being Pollyanna and positive because some traders, when they're doing things wrong, they'll sweep the trade under the carpet and go, oh, well, don't worry about that. On to the next one. So it's not just about being positive. It's about being honest with where your strengths and weaknesses are and the things that you can do to improve that. I say focus on these things. In terms of improving your attributes, focus on resilience and how you can improve your resilience and understand that that is something that you can work on and build very much like building a muscle. Focus on discipline. Yeah? Make sure you do it. No trader gets up in the morning and goes, do you know what? Today, I'm just going to screw it and mess it all up. All of you here wake up with the intention of being disciplined, but how many of you are focusing and measuring how disciplined you are on a daily, weekly, monthly yearly basis. Delayed gratification. You day traders out there, you want it now, don't you? You want the profit now, you want the profit now. Well, a lot of people get into day trading because they want the profits quick. Well, it doesn't matter whether you're a day trader or a swing trader, delayed gratification is key. You've got to be able to go through periods where you're not making money. And when you are making money, don't suddenly expect it to stay that way. Accept the fact that your PL is going to fluctuate and it isn't going to be linear. You're not always going to be in a losing run and you're not always going to be in a winning run. So two questions you can ask yourself. What specific ways can I work on developing the above? And it's different for different people. But actually actively spend time working on resilience, discipline, and being good at delayed gratification. And then here, what are the likely trading conditions where these attributes will get put under pressure? When am I likely to lose resilience? Is it when I'm losing? Is it when I'm on a winning run? When is my discipline most likely to weaken? Is it when I'm bored? For me, if it's I have a period of no trades, that's when I'm most likely. And I've known that for years and I've worked on it. But I'm still aware that that's the weak point for me if I, get, if I haven't got trades coming up. But it's a work in progress and every trader is. So, Last thing I want to leave you with, too many traders I speak to unconsciously spend their time looking for technical solutions to what is clearly a psychological problem. That doesn't mean you shouldn't be working on your technical skills and your charting and everything else. But a lot of the time, it's actually a psychological problem. And they're trying to solve that psychological problem with more indicators and more charts. So that's number one. Number two, thinking back testing is the holy grail. Now, Hang on a minute. Those of you that know me, my guys at the front here, they'll know that I'm big on backtesting and big on data. And again, I'm not saying that that isn't something that should make up your trading profile and what you actually do. I'm very big on backtesting and data analysis. But I've seen this with students I've worked with where they'll go away and backtest a strategy over a year and they, fit, they put a line in the sand and they say, right, that's it, I'm done now. That's it, I've done my backtesting. And they unconsciously expect the next six months to look exactly the same as the six months of backtesting. And when the markets don't, suddenly it goes to pieces. And then their discipline goes and their resilience goes because they felt that just because they'd done six months worth of backtesting, the next six months were gonna reward them. And that's not always the case. Those of you know that the market doesn't immediately reward you for hard work. So when it comes to data analysis and backtesting, it's the psychology behind that data and how you use it that really counts. This is the big one for me. I use my data, be it my back-tested data or my previous live trade data as a guide. 
I think of it like a footprint that I can refer back to, especially if I'm going through a period of extremes, even if it's extreme winning or extreme losing. I can refer back and give that period that I'm going through context relative to what has happened in the past. And I like it as a point of reference. So over time, I can build up a period of trading and go, okay, let's look at the last three months, let's look at the last six months. What do they look like in comparison to the previous six months, the previous year? Are there periods of the year where I tend to make more money than others? Not in terms of date, but what I've been able to see is I make most of my money in about a third of any given year. Now, knowing that, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be the same every year, but that means I go into the year with a more stable focus because that's the pattern of how I trade. Not every trade is going to be the same, but knowing that about my own trading means I'm more, I'm more resilient. So it links back to the insight I've just been telling you. Tip, if your current live results are 50% worse than your worst performing period during testing or previous live trading, that's the time to stop and review. Doesn't mean you stop and give up the strategy, but you have to understand that random distribution is gonna play a role in what you do. So there will be periods that are worse than your worst period of back testing or live previous live data. There will be periods that are better. So you have to have some flexibility in there as well. And then insight number three, how long have I got? I think about five minutes so I can get there. Not understanding these three major biases. So the first one, who here has heard of recency bias? A few hands going up. Who hasn't? It's quite a few that haven't. So recency bias in layman's terms is when you as the trader will be focusing more on what has happened to you more recently. So in simple terms, if you've just come off the back of a six trader winning run, you're gonna be focused on the fact that you've sussed it, you're master of the markets, and where do I go and order the Ferrari? So you are focused in on what has happened more recently. But what if that immediate result was five losing trades? Understand that as a human, you are susceptible to being emotional about what you've happened to you more recently rather than what happened to you two and a half years ago. So just knowing that, and accepting that puts you ahead of most of the traders out there. Confirmation bias, who's heard of this one? Yeah, this is where you suddenly see that support line that stops you taking that trade because you've had four losing trades, so you're being affected by the recency bias, and suddenly there's a confirmation bias there as well, where you are looking at certain things and excluding others. Last one, really important, hindsight bias. Yeah. Those of you that have sat on a trade, sat on a trade, it's got close to your target, close to your target, it pulls away from your target, then it goes back up towards your target, then it comes back down again, then it finally hits your target, and what do you feel? You feel a sense of relief, right? And then two weeks later, when it's 400 points past your target, what are you saying to yourself? I knew I should have stayed in, yeah? It's that idea. So we're very good with the benefit of hindsight in making decisions. The key thing in that scenario is, are you using hindsight bias to make a mess of the decisions you then make. So, are the necessary actions that I take each day in line with my clear long-term vision or goal as a trader? Or do I let these biases control my actions short-term? This is a question, you don't have to have it quite as complicated as that, but basically, are these biases impacting what I'm doing? Am I aware of it and can I measure it? Thanks for listening, guys. Hope it was useful.